Yeah, hi everyone. Today I'm going to talk about MRuby. It's very nice to be here and talk about it for you because it's my first time here in Singapore and first time here uh, in Singapore uh, Ruby Meetup. So, yeah, let's start who I am. So I'm a full stack developer, mostly Rails and JavaScript. I'm working for Polish company Pilot.com, the Pilot Co, uh, remotely. In free time I'm traveling and cycling. Uh, this is my uh, Twitter and GitHub, if anybody wants. And also, I want to thank you, Tinkerbox, for hosting me in their office for two weeks. So, yeah. Okay, so let's start with that. What is MRuby? Okay, so it is the CRuby subset, which was created about two years ago. Two years ago, two or three. Yeah, it has. It's supposed to be Lua alternative. Uh, the next thing is that. It do, does not need post postix. It just need C99. So it's like it works for more, more platforms. Uh, it could be embedded in the C or C++ application, and the it's mostly compatible with C Ruby 2.1. It's like it should work for the most cases. Okay. So let's start. With so let's start with the MRuby toolset, what we are getting after the installation of MRuby and what we can do with it. So yeah, this is what MRuby installs on our like this binary uh, things which MRuby installs. It's MRBR, MRBC, MRDB, MRuby, and MRuby strip. And let's talk about each one. So yeah, MIRB, it's like IRB for MRuby, like nothing special, just yeah, simple. Console, yeah, MRBC. This is the nice thing because it let us compile the Ruby code into bytecode. I hope you guys can see this. There's no problem with visible. So let, yeah, it's looking like that. We have the file test.rb and it's like just puts OK, and we compile it uh, with MRBC. And this what we are getting is like how it's like parsed with MRuby and this is what we are getting as a as our bytecode so basically what it's saying is like okay load self then put string on top of everything then send puts and the puts is taking this our okay string and stop application so basically that's all yes there's another oh yeah, yeah it's possible so yeah I there's second example which is like puts one put point plus two so as we can see, just making pretty much the same thing. It's loading itself, then it's putting on top one, then adding two to, to it, and on the top we have three, and they are, we are sending puts. Yeah, basically that's all. Uh, we're also getting the MRDB, it's like MRuby debugger, because we have to get some tool set to debug, and basically that's how it's working. I hope it works. Okay, this is when we compiled uh, the code and it's not having this optional flags for deba debugging. We, would, we cannot debug this kind of code. And when, uh, when we cannot get debug information, we have to add this minus g when we're compiling to the bytecode. Yeah, this one. And this add debug information to our bytecode. And then we can run the, our debugger. So what we get is like, we can get the lines, we can set breakpoints, we can have all some data, we can print some data, like normal debugger like GDB or something else. So we added here a breakpoint, uh, we printed the value of the val, it's like 3, then we evolved, evolved the val value is 12, we had evolved and now value is 12, and when we continue the application, uh, it will put uh, as 12. <coughs> this is the list. Yeah, so when we try to continue our application, which was basically puts val, it's put as 12 because we changed the value. Okay. Where's full screen mode? 
Okay. Yeah. Okay, it's working. I don't know why I get this white thing, but okay. I'm Ruby. I'm Ruby is like Ruby, Ruby interpreter. So if we want to run this binary code, binary code, then we have to add, add minus b, and it will work. If not, just level it. Okay. So what is the differences between Ruby and MRuby? Okay. So firstly, we cannot require any file in MRuby. If we want to acquire any external gem or library, it has to be set in the config, not in the, our application. Okay, we don't get any threats, so if you want to do some multi-processing, multi-threads multi application, the MRuby won't work for this. There is like MRuby thread gem, but it's using the uh, green threads, so it's not like system, but it's like basically an app support and we don't get native support of kernel sleep. Okay, so how we can put our Ruby code into some embedded device, embedded code. Okay, so Ruby in C++ and C. Okay, this is the basic example. So, first of all, we start with this code which is shown on the top. Uh, basically what it's doing is like creating the Ruby context with uh, MRB state, and then we are evol evolving this code that puts hello world one plus one in the context of state which we created, and then we are closing it. Uh, this is the command which compiles it, and when we can, when we run it, it's like running natively binary code which we can push to the client. Okay, so basically it was Ruby, but sometimes we want to use this bytecode feature and put it this this in the C. So how it will look like? Okay, first of all we start with uh, using MRBC and we compile it with a flag B which creates us this binary binary test string uh, hash and then, yeah, okay. Then we create same as there, uh, Ruby state but instead of re read reading the string we are reading this binary form of our code and we start a new process with context with which we created. So basically pretty much the same thing. And here is supposed to be a code, but I don't know what we have this. This white thing, fresh pitch, maybe try. Yeah. Yeah. So this is how to compile it. Basically the same thing. And which, which we will get on the uh, as output, we will get the binary thing, binary uh, file, which will work for us. So then, when we have our process of development, we have to remember about that. We have to create each time we we building our system new version. We have to create a new binary uh, table with our Ruby code representation. Okay, so how we can extend MRuby or uh, with gems. So this is the basic structure of the, the most basic gem I can imagine. Uh, it contains Ruby code and C code. So, okay, next. Okay, it's mrbgem.rake file. Uh, the things, it's stolen from the documentation, so it was easier. Uh, there's, you just have to set license, author and summary. This is the free basic stuff which we need. And then if we want to add dependency, we just do it that way. Okay, so this is our Ruby code. If we want to add some Ruby code to our gem, we just put it in mrblib and it will be automatically added. Okay, in src uh, directory, we add our uh, C or C++ code. And how it's working. Basically, uh, the most two important uh, two functions are this one and this one. The first one, first one is saying uh, what, 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 what should happen after the gem is loaded. So in this case, we're creating new class, uh, CRuby extension, and we are defining new method for this class. Uh, so as first we, we're getting our context, then we're getting this class, then we're saying what's the name, 
uh, then we setting what is the method and the last argument is saying how many arguments this function has so for this case it's zero uh, the next thing is final basically if we want to destroy any objects or clean up what, what we created we will be putting it, it here and on the top we have a definition of our method it's basically printing out the text nothing special yeah so that's all it's like basic basic gem okay so how about examples of yours uh, mruby first of all it's mruby web erb so it's like it's pretty much working it's wrote in it's wrote uh, in javascript a little bit and mostly c so it's compiled from the C to JavaScript, and it's like working fully, native, fully natively in the browser. Next thing is MRuby Arduino. Uh, so, cool thing about this MRuby, we can install it on the ARM or uh, different platforms. So, it's not only for uh, PC or uh, Mac or different kinds of 64 uh, bit architecture. Uh, CPU, but it could run different other, and this could be a great idea to introduce someone to the <coughs> microcontrollers, just given not C, but given this Ruby interface of uh, C, uh, which is much, much more easier. Uh, we also have this Mobi Ruby. It's, I know there is like, uh, there's already working implementation of Ruby for iOS and Mac, but this is free one and open source one. It's basically working as a MRuby wrapper over the uh, Coca library. And uh, here's some demo. If you go to the website, there's like source code of this. Pretty much a couple of lines. Okay, so if there's any questions about MRuby, yeah? Uh, inside the gym, you had the class definition, and inside that, the class definition name. Yeah. Dot method name. Is that itself not available there? Uh, what? So, uh, back inside your gym, when you were showing us the Ruby example. Ruby or C code? Ruby. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah? Why have you got module C Ruby? Oh, it's like, it's not a class. Yeah. Okay, there you go, sorry. It's not a class. So, it's a module. Okay, anyone else? So, thank you for your attention.